Hey, babe. What's up? Hey. I don't want to overplay it, but it's starting to feel like a repeat of 2020. I was talking to some of the other nurses this morning, and my coworker got fired. So I highly doubt I'm going to have a job by next weekend, and I'm starting to panic. What? On top of that, the protests are already mostly peaceful and getting worse every night. Then, with the bad air quality, lockdowns and evacuations are becoming mandatory. I just don't think I'm going to be able to get out of New York if I keep waiting. At this point, they won't even let me step foot in an airport either, so I just really need your help. Okay. Yeah, give me an hour and I'll be on the road. Hey guys, today we are here with our good buddy Chad Barber, who's a uh, member of the overlanding team Rally Rats. And today we've prepped him with a scenario uh, based on having to get into a large city and get out before absolute chaos erupts. And Chad is uh, pretty well known for uh, taking these massive overlanding excursions, being gone on the road for four to six weeks at a time. And so he has really great insight as to what you should pack in your vehicle to sustain you for long periods of time if you have to. So Chad, you're gonna have to go pick up your girlfriend slash future fiance slash future wife. No pressure. <laughs> uh, why don't you give us a little bit of context first? Tell us briefly about your truck and then we'll jump into the, con in, into the contents of it. Um, sure. What do you got here? So this is a 2005 4Runner, or what they would say a fourth gen. Um, what's really special about this for me is it still has the 2UZ FE, which is a V8. Uh, one of the last V8s that they, that Toyota has come out with. So, and th the other special thing is this is known for like the million mile engine per se. So. I know it's gonna last. I know the, the durability and reliability is there. So with all these trips that you've actually been on, what's the farthest that you've taken this in, in one trip? Yeah, so one big trip that we did a couple years back, actually we, we've done a couple throughout the years, but the biggest one was probably about 6,000 miles. We went from Tennessee through Arkansas, Oklahoma, down to Colorado, um, and then back. And that was, that was a good chunk, also hit Moab, while we were out there too. And then uh, last year we went out to New Mexico. So that was another, you know, four or 5,000 mile trip um, in preps for Alaska. So we're, we're planning an Alaska trip and that is going to be at least a couple of months, I would say. I don't have all the miles like calculated off the top of my head right now, but it's, it's a, a lot. To go. Yeah. 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 And I mean, going back to the V8, yeah, it's cool having a V8, but it also is not great on gas. That's probably the biggest downfall of having this vehicle or any vehicle, honestly, that you're building out with a ton of weight um, and just like throwing everything in there all at once and like hitting the road for 5,000 miles. Uh, yeah, gas mileage, that's something you have to consider in the back of your head. Like, I gotta be prepped for if I were to run out of gas. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. So another scenario we set up for you is kind of in the vein of bugging out. Essentially, you have a loved one that needs to get out of, it, out of an area um, before things get too crazy because if they waited until uh, things really popped off or got bad, those urban areas are gonna be ultra congested. So we've kind of set yeah. this up for you still have time to get in, get out. How about you show us what's inside and what you would take on this uh, long trip from Tennessee up to New York. Yeah, sure. So, you know, I was talking about gas and fuel. So I've got, um, I've got 10 gallons of extra fuel here. And then I've got another three gallon uh, uh, can that I, t uh, Rotopax that I typically keep in here that I throw up on this window panel here. Um, and then we've got five gallons of water here and then I also have another five gallons of water in the cab, which I'll show you here in a second. And then also another two gallon tank up here on the panel. Um, so that's kind of my, basically as much as I could carry. So how far do you think you can go with a V8 and a lot of stuff on this car with a full tank of gas before you have to dip into your reserves? Uh, so the tank that is stock with the Forerunner is a 23 gallon tank, so I can get about 250 to 275 miles depending on conditions and 
terrain and all that stuff uh, with the additional fuel that I carry, you know, outside of the vehicle uh, is probably another 130 to 150 miles. So you're looking probably between 370 to 400, 425, something like that, which is not a lot to be honest, but it's enough to, you know, basically get out of the city and get somewhere where, you know, you need a little more protection. So how often are you filling up? Are you waiting until it gets empty or are you like going three quarters, half? Yeah, so in desperate times, I would probably go till it's empty, but typically I'll keep it right around uh, you know, a quarter and then try and fill up from there. Gotcha. So, cool. Um, again, going back to like terrain, this thing is going to suck down a lot more gas off road because you're moving at slower paces, uh, you know, depending on hill climbs, elevation climbs, all that stuff, you know, you're, you're really giving the vehicle more torque, more gas. So, uh, yeah, it's, probably the biggest downfall of having an overland rig or a v8 such yeah. as this is fuel so someone with a prius is going to fare a little bit better in that regard though they're not going to have the ability to you know drive over stuff yes but the contents are still relevant right gotcha and you can build out you know say you do have a prius or something like that uh, the biggest things you would need obviously are food water and then the ability to have like shelter, which you could sleep in your Prius and have, you know, a small, um, like a sleeping bag or blankets, or if you if you did want to sleep outside of your, your Prius or whatever, you could pitch a tent. There's obviously a ton of options for lightweight backpacking tents. Um, and you could, you could also use that as shelter as well. So there's basically no reason to not have that stuff with you. Yeah, yeah, with how compact everything is nowadays with the ultra light um, scene, yeah, there's really no reason to just chuck it in the vehicle. But if you wanted some serious shelter, uh, you know, away from animals, critters, people, whatever, sleeping in your vehicle probably is, is your best option. You know, obviously with your firearm. Yeah. Right there. Gotcha, so. cool. But yeah, going back into basically what I have typically loaded all the time is uh, this is basically my kitchen. So I have everything from a stove to pans, coffee, all that good stuff. And then I've got a little five gallon propane tank, which this thing will actually last a really long time. Uh, you know, obviously you want to be conservative with leaving your, or not leaving your burner on and just letting it go to waste. But so a little five gallon tank here. Um, so kitchen and then this box is food. So this is a front runner, front runner wolf pack. And this thing actually holds quite a bit of food. Like I could get away with, you know, a couple weeks of dry goods in there let's pull that bad boy out yeah i want to see what you got in there so i don't have it fully stocked and right hungry. now i didn't eat breakfast well terrible here, have a have a granola bar oh no i'm fine <laughs> but yeah you could fit you know a ton of canned goods dry goods all that stuff in there and the cool thing about these is if you have multiples they stack on each other really nice and you can tie it down and it's it's just a good way to go with with gotcha. having food gotcha that does look like it'd hold a lot yeah yeah cool um sweet and then the the other cool thing that i do have in here which i can show you after we're finished with this is i've got a 45 liter fridge yeah like an actual refrigerator in the truck so that can house you know meats all your cold go cold goods you know ham whatever you want to put in there cold drinks um and that will last for a long long time as well so i could easily be prepped with food you know for myself and a loved one for you know weeks at a time what does the refrigerator run on is it going to your car battery or do you have something else yeah so <laughs> and this is we can get into the nitty-gritty but just a general overview right now i have it on a a Jackery, which is like a portable battery. It's a hundred watt unit. 
Um, I typically leave the fridge plugged into that and then that battery is actually charging off the car battery. And then the car battery obviously is charging while you're driving and then I also have a 100 watt solar panel on top of the tent which feeds power to the house battery in the truck which will essentially charge everything. So um, typically when I get to a destination I will um, I will unplug, actually I've done this multiple ways, but I'll unplug the fridge from the Jackery, plug it directly into the truck and let that run overnight. Um, and then also charge my battery, my external battery at the same time. So it, it's really, it's kind of the budget way to go for providing power to like a fridge. Typically most guys will end up doing like a, a dual battery system so you have you know, 200 watt batteries under the hood and one of them is feeding all of your electronics in the vehicle and then the house battery is just for like starting and you know lights and all that good stuff. So there's definitely a ton of different options to be able to you know have power to all these accessories. Uh, it just I have not sprung for doing a whole dual battery system in the truck yet. That is one thing on my list. Uh, the other cool thing with the portable Jackery batteries is I have two 100 watt solar panels that I store in the truck at all times. So if I'm in sun, I'm at a destination, I'm not driving for the day or something, I can easily take that battery and those solar panels out of the truck and just let it charge from the sun. Granted, it's a little bit slower of a charge, but... Um, you do still have an external way to regain yes. energy if you do need it. Yeah. That's cool. I can tell in the of, comment section right now, some dude sliding in being like, but what if there's nuclear fallout on it? It's blacking out the sky. This doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, we're all dead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, well, let's see your kitchen. Oh. Yeah. So, pull this guy out. All right. <clears throat> so this box has sustained me. I've built this out to my needs. Everyone's gonna have something a little bit different, but you know, typically I'll, I'll keep a cast iron in, in here, which is really great for meat. And then just a small little frying pan, plates. Um, this is probably my favorite stove ever. This is a jet boil, I forget the model, but it's very compact. It's not like your typical Coleman stove that's like, you know, giant and you're trying to figure out where to put it in your car, so. This thing folds up, super cool. Just pop it out real quick. Give you, give oh, you that is sick, dude. Burner. Yeah, double burner. And then the other cool thing about Jetboil is you can add like, they have like a solo burner that you could attach to this and have a third burner. So definitely a, a cool option. It's a little bit more on the expensive side, but you know, for efficiency's sake and um, being able to pack it nice and tight, I was like, yeah, totally worth it. How much is that? Uh, probably put this around like 300. Dude, I'm getting one. Yeah. I've never even seen that thing before. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then obviously, gotta have the jet boil for coffee. That's a given. I think everyone needs one of these. You can run these off, you know, obviously that, that propane in there, or you actually have the jet, uh, jet boil fuel, which is uh, butane and Actually, I forget. It's, it's like a 50-50 mix, so propane and, uh, yeah, butane, so. Huh, nice. Um, always keep a couple of spares in there. And then silverware, everything to cook with, uh, you know, salt and pepper and stuff in there. Is that what that bag is designed for? Absolutely not. So that's a tool roll <laughs> from Carhartt, and I just repurposed it for. Heck yeah. Dude, you know, that's rad. My yeah. kitchen setup. That's a great idea. Smart. Yeah. And then I'm a big coffee guy, like coffee connoisseur, you could say. So got to have my AeroPress, um, be able to make espresso like on the go. So between that and the French press jet boil, like coffee needs are covered. Um, just another pot to cook, you know, rice, beans, all that stuff. I actually have like a sink where you can wash dishes because Honestly, being on the road for a long time, like also being sanitized is super important for 
you know, health reasons, yeah. all that good stuff. And you probably waste a lot of water trying to do it off of a spigot, yeah. as opposed to making a bucket or a sink with soapy water. A little bit, yeah, and just washing it. So, uh, you know, cutting board, MSR uh, water filter system. So this is, this comes from like the ultra lightweight backpacking world. So when you're out on the trail for, you know, weeks, couple weeks, whatever, uh, you can easily get water from any source and filter it into like an algae or whatever. Downfall about that is <clears throat> if I'm trying to fill up like a five gallon water tank, it's gonna take forever. forever. Yeah. But if you're desperate, desperate times. How long are we taking? Are we leaders. talking like? I don't know, I I've, I've actually have not done that. For a whole jug? For a whole jug. Yeah. But in theory, you could collect water Yes. And then if you need to filter something to drink or to sanitize, you know, your hands, yeah. you could filter just your required amount mm -hmm. and go from there. Yep. Uh, there's, you know, other guys on the team that have an actual system where you can just throw in a lake and it's like automatic flip a switch and it just pumps the water. Yeah. yeah. The downfall with that is it's bigger, so it's gonna take up more space not as efficient. Um, the one that's in, popular in that right part. now is like the Canaan Provisions one. Yeah. That's kind of small, runs off a of battery, but I kind of, I'm curious on those. Well, it's also kind of crazy because there's actually a lot of freshwater spigots all through, like in yeah. every city and every yeah. town, like yeah, just absolutely. knowing where they're at and finding them, quick and easy way to fill up. Yeah, uh, and that, I mean, I've kind of had leftover from my backpacking days, so mm -hmm. it was just a no-brainer just to keep it in the truck and, like, can filter water whenever I need. When you guys were on your trips uh, and you needed to refill your water, how did you do it? So on these long trips, it really just makes sense to know your uh, restock positions um, throughout the route because we have six people. Oh. Or six vehicles typically in the group, so. Um, you could go through a lot of water. Yeah, which water co uh, conservation is, is a big <laughs> a big thing. We've. <laughs> so you guys probably spend a lot of time ahead of time mapping not just where you're gonna go to eat, to refuel, but also for water. Yeah. Yeah, in most, uh, you know, there's some apps out there that will allow you to be like, oh, I'm going through this area of whatever state and it'll show you like spigot points to where you could just pop in and like oh sweet fill up your jerry cans or whatever you need do you know what the app is on the top of your head i, I don't i can look it up though we can put it you know yeah link in bio yeah, yeah. link in bio around the screen i overlander yeah there we go camera guys got it nice. yeah <laughs> um but yeah that's basically the kitchen setup like i said i mean i can cook for multiple people at a time which i've done and yeah um it's it's very minimalistic uh, i try not to go overboard with everything that i carry simply because uh weight I'm trying to save weight as much as possible so if someone was doing food and water and they had let's say a, a prius or a corolla what items would you say you know maybe i don't need all of these things maybe i don't need a sink maybe i don't need multiple plates if you had to pack for a smaller vehicle, what of these small items would be a must? Uh, I would definitely go a jet boil and a pot. Um, you know, and obviously some extra propane uh, to go along with that. Uh, this, you can cook, you know, beans, rice, cut up some meat, throw it in there. Um, and like I said, it, it's compact, it's enough to sustain you, and uh, you'll be good to go. Yeah. And then uh, some way to filter water, but yeah, that can and, be- And filter water. Nice. Okay. So. Awesome. Well, that kind of does it for the kitchen. Yeah. yeah. You wanna pack this back up? Give us some room to work? Yeah, sure. Do that. Yeah, I wanna watch how you even like get it all in there. So the cast iron, I love having the cast iron because steaks on a cast iron is just the bee's knees. Like any type of meat, bacon, steaks, whatever. I always love hearing like bug out plans of people and they're like, oh, I have like cliff bars and oh, I have MREs. It's like, dude, at a certain point, 
not only do you get tired of eating some of that stuff, but like your body, like struggle. You should still try your best to eat well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's why I love having the fridge, because it just gives me that option of being able to, you know, have cold cuts and veggies and meat and all that stuff. So. So these are not your average like jerry cans per se. These are kind of catered more towards like, I mean, this one is, this is a really heavily modified, uh, you know, typical jerry can that you can find at like a surplus store. Uh, so five gallons. And then I've also put a water pump inside and I also have, you know, a hose and you turn the battery on and you have automatic water, like a faucet. So just, just kind of those creature comfort comforts when you're out on the road, as opposed to, you know, taking the lid off and having to pour it and do all that crap. And then on this one, this has a spigot down below, so you can just turn the spigot and you got running water. Nice. And Thank then, you. yeah, this one over here is actually cool too, cause it's like, same thing gravity fed just nice boop, boop. so uh what do you have this mounted up in here with looks like metal molly yeah so definitely a ton of mods in here uh there's a, a lot of different companies that make these molly panels that you can attach basically whatever to i've got a couple different brands in here right now just because i wanted to test you know various brands and whatnot so uh victory four by four panel and then a orange box fabrication panel um they're all basically the same they're all good quality that's just kind of what you want in your price range and and whatnot will determine obviously what you get so and then the other cool thing that i love having is a drawer system uh this allows me to, well, everyone's got different setups in their drawer systems, but what I opted for is this drawer is full of tools to get the job done. Cause going through, you know, when we're off-roading, doing a bunch of hard trails and stuff, things break. Well, how are you gonna fix things if they break? Tools. So you gotta carry tools, and you gotta carry spare parts. So this drawer is a dedicated tool, tool drawer. What's in those dockas? Those are Magpul dockas? So this is, yeah, these are Magpul dockas. These are the large takeout bags. So I've got, you know, kind of screwdrivers, wrenches, all that stuff in there, hammers, whatnot. And then this one houses all of my sockets. So I've built out this particular pouch for every size needed for a Toyota vehicle. Wow. So I can literally fix anything from drive shafts to alternators to, you know, whatever. Um, we've got... Is there a company that just like, you can buy a set of all the wrenches and sockets you need for your particular vehicle? Yes. There there is a company that comes in a small pelican i think it's called speed speed tool speed tools or something nice little travel pelican um has every single socket that you need and all that good stuff well that sucks because i was going to suggest you should do it. you should do it so i should and i thought about it the one thing i didn't like is the size of the pelican mm -hmm. And so I decided to build out my own specific for my needs. That way I can fit everything in these DACA pouches and just throw it in one of the drawer systems. So how, yeah, so you should do your own. How, how important would you say organization is? Because everything that you have, your kitchen, I mean, when I go camping, my forerunner is just a big empty box on wheels and yeah. everything goes in there. And then on the way back, it's even worse. Right. There's no organization. So yeah. when you're, let's say just one week or any anything longer than, I guess, a weekend, 
How important is it to stay organized? Uh, I think it's very important. It's, uh, you know, probably in that top, you know, 20 percentile of, of importance. Uh, everything has a place and I have my systems and I know, okay, well, if I have to change a, a CV, all right, well, get the tools out of the drawer. I know exactly where my sockets and everything is. And then, you know, my spare parts bin, grab the axle, get, get to work, you know? So it's, it just, is efficient you're saving and time. yeah you're saving a lot of time well and just like what you did with your your kitchen you're using parts that may not necessarily be perfectly made for it or your tools yeah and you're making it fit your personal needs and if you guys are looking for good ways to stay organized go find some tools for your guns your gear stuff going to a plate carrier maybe you have a gp pouch on the front of your plate carrier and you don't want all of your batteries and small parts in there Check out Shooting Surplus because they have Magpul Dakas and a lot of really good organizational systems where you can be better prepared, saving time and not spend time or wasting time looking for extra parts. And then also, if something goes missing, you suddenly know, wait a minute, there's an empty spot here. Organization is a big deal. Thank you, Shooting Surplus. If you guys are looking to save a little bit of money, check out the description in this video. There's a link for an email chain and more stuff from Shooting Surplus partnered with us along the way. Sorry, Chad. <laughs> what? Chad was God, like, wait, what's going on? You're such a YouTuber on? now. <laughs> um, but I mean, you're absolutely right. Like if I knew something was missing, that would honestly, like, I would be thinking about it nonstop. Like, where did it go? Where did I put, like, this makes no sense. And like, when other people borrow my tools and stuff and they don't put something back exactly how they found it, I freak out a little bit. Yeah. That would be me. <laughs> it would be probably be, of all his friends, it would probably be me that borrowed it and didn't put it back. All you, all you use to fix your car is zip ties. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Dude, zip Accurate. ties, honestly, keep a pack of zip ties in there. They're, they're good for a lot of things. We've gotten out of some pretty sticky situations by just like, oh, a bolt broke. Okay, well, let's like triple zip tie it and like That's we'll, awesome. we'll get back to town. Yeah. So it's uh, also the, uh, uh, the, the rubber coated wire, whatever that stuff is called. What, like heat shrink? No, no, rubber coated wire. So it like, you bend it and tie oh, it Oh yeah, yeah, like I, the gear ties or whatever. Yeah, gear ties, Something there you go. Like yeah. I keep a lot of those, which is great whenever you have a FJ with a rusty frame that likes to fall apart, <laughs> so. <laughs> Don't say that on camera. <laughs> okay, this is pretty rad, dude. So Chad, one question. Uh, for the person who has the Toyota Prius, the Corolla, or maybe even a 4Runner that they haven't, you know, opened up the back hatch and looked at their spare tire before, mm -hmm. what would you say as far as tools go? Do most cars, modern cars, come with the tools necessary to change a tire or you know swap a battery? Or are you gonna have to go source those on your own? So most cars these days, yeah, will come with like a tire iron and all that good stuff. But uh, that's something you definitely wanna double check like when you're purchasing a vehicle, like, hey, where's, where's my spare tire go? Where's the tools to be able to you know, get the vehicle off the ground and change change the tire and stuff. Cause we've ran into situations on a trail where <sighs> poor, poor soy boys, <laughs> God bless them. But this dude, you know, was driving a Subaru, got stuck and he did not know that he had a full tool set, you know, under his, <clears throat> in his, in his trunk, like in a hidden compartment. And he, he just didn't know what to do. So we showed him and we ended up getting him out of that situation. But um, yeah, he... He just wasn't familiar enough with his own vehicle no. to even know that you have some parts on yeah. hand. Of course yeah, it was not a Subaru. At all. Yeah. So fun fact, whenever I bought my FJ, I bought it used and uh, the former owner had, or the prior owner had changed up like larger tires, all that stuff. And I just assumed, oh yeah, the jack and everything is back there, it's good. And uh, it wasn't until I needed to change a tire out. Um, luckily I was at home, I was just gonna change my own tire. And uh, went back there, pulled the jack out, and it was the stock one that comes with Toyota, and it actually would not jack up high enough to yeah. lift the truck. So had I not gone back there and checked that, mm -hmm. so I went and ordered one that would actually like, you know, lift it. So if you're buying used cars or trucks, check out what you got. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, obviously my tool set's a little more extensive because we are beating the hell out of these vehicles and bigger components break and stuff. And we just, we gotta be prepared. 
So, yeah. but you know, all this stuff again lives in the vehicle. Like it does not come out of the vehicle. So it's like, oh, there's a situation. Oh, okay. Grab my keys, you know, maybe an algae and water and off I go. Yeah. Well, what, what do you got in this uh, right compartment? Oh yeah. So this houses, um, this guy right here is a table. What? Because table space is super important. Um, it's just like an overlander thing. But we got spare liquids, you know, gear oil. Whoa, 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 whoa. that says ATF on it. What is that? Oh yeah. You, okay, yeah, that's we, better. We don't talk about that. Okay. No, it's automatic transmission fluid. Oh. Dude, they're gonna need to rebrand. <laughs> they gotta rename that entire thing, change the name of the car part and everything. Yeah, for real. Can't have that. Um, you know, coolant, uh, I have smaller parts that tend to break quite a bit when you're going over boulders and stuff, like tire rods, inner, outer tire rods. Uh, that CV axle that I was talking about, got a spare in there. If I'm on a longer, expedition you know weeks at a time i'll carry two of these it's just good to have what's a cv axle for so us illiterate and yeah the cv axle um goes from your differential to your wheel or your tire it's basically what makes your tire spin gotcha yeah so gosh um answer i mean i mean depending on on the truck gotcha okay yeah. cool um in short now i know completely what you're talking about yeah <laughs> yeah like two-wheel drive vehicles uh that guy over there could probably talk about it <laughs> um got him but yeah mov moving on okay uh so yeah spare parts um jumper cables just in case oil filter uh, a lot of times on these older rusty vehicles uh, it's difficult to break bolts free. So this PB blaster is, saves a lot of headache. We'll save a lot of, you know, broken bolts by just spraying some of this on there, letting it sit, uh, gets, gets the rust out. It's a lubricant and you can get those bolts out a lot easier. Um, I need some of that for my Cub Cadet. Yeah. Spare belts too. That's also super important. Belts tend to break. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. What is, what is this? I just got to ask because it, it's bringing back flashbacks, uh, getting, you know, pulled over. yeah, pulled over. Yeah. That's my, and my, uh, my license. detonation device. So, oh, yeah. sick. Beep. No, this actually controls my winch. So I have a wireless winch. This is the remote for it. It just so happens that the wireless system module that's in the winch, um, broke. So this is basically trash. I've just kind of kept it in here because I need to work on it and try and get that fixed. So the, the winch controller that I have right now is a little bit jank, but it's what we had at the time to make a fix work. And I've just rolled with it because honestly, it's been, it's been a good little fix, so. Nice. So that's the drawer system. Obviously, if I didn't have a drawer system, it would be very unorganized and a mess to try and store all this stuff somewhere throughout the vehicle. Um, it just, for me and what I'm doing, it just makes sense to put everything in the drawers. A lot of people will use drawers for like their kitchen or, you know, clothes, whatever. Um, but this, this works really well for me. So is that your only cooktop that you have there, the stainless steel piece? Uh, so this, I have the stainless steel, which I use to, you know, chop up vegetables or whatever, fold down table here. Oh, nice. So this is typically where I cook everything and I run my propane line to the stove. Um, so, you know, I'll get food cooked up there. And then I also have another drop down table right here. This one's a little more jank. Um, not proud of this, but you know, I made it work. So. <laughs> it's better, th better than the ground. Yes, for sure. And then you have a little bit of overhead storage for looks like some sleep system stuff. Yeah, so um, I can't remember the company off the top of my head, but pretty common, just like a net that attaches to, you know, 
uh, points. And blankets, sleeping bag, colder weather, like I've got a sleeping bag liner, which adds, you know, plus 20 degrees or whatever, which is super nice. Um, and then fishing rods, like it's a great place to just throw my fishing rods and have them hanging out there. Um, yeah, whether it's for leisure or for yeah. emergency. Yeah, these these always stay in the truck too. So if I do find myself at a spot and I need food and there's there is you know a lake or something, I can fish, try and catch something, and cook it up. Nice. So and then super important, this is a medical box. So it's got everything from a boo boo kit to trauma kit to you know plug and gun wounds, all that good stuff. Um, yeah. Nice. Have you had to bust that out yet on the road? Uh, mostly boo-boo kits, which people tend to not think about having like just a small kit with like band-aids and, you know, neosporin and all that stuff. Um, so that is very important, but that's honestly what I've used most out of that kit. Gotcha. And then I also have a smaller kind of grab and go medical kit. Uh, up on my headrest up here that I can just uh, detach it and run to a situation if I need to. Gotcha. This one takes a little bit longer to get to because I got to undo. I basically just undo the strap and pull it out, but it's just easier to grab something off the headrest and cool. grab and go. And fire extinguisher, extra tourniquet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I could have used a fire extinguisher at one point in my truck. Yes, so very important to have, uh, especially when you're getting into a lot of accessory lighting. Um, you know, there's a ton of wires feeding all to the engine bay or, you know, wherever you have your dual battery system or whatever you're hooking up. Um, fires happen, like they do. Electrical fires happen, like, plenty of videos on YouTube of people having to put out fires on the trail and it's it's a very important thing to have in your truck. This isn't the best spot for a fire extinguisher but um, it's where I have it for now. I'll eventually end up putting it like under my seat in the front. There's a company that makes some mounts that you can just attach a fire extinguisher there because uh, as of now if there is a fire like I gotta run to either one of the side doors or like you know, work this whole contraption to get in here just to grab this. Dude, so. as my FJ began to fall apart several years ago, I had the, uh, you remember when my wheel bearing yeah. came oh, out? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My wheel bearing came out yeah. and you know, it's wobbling everywhere. Whenever I went to go put on the brakes, obviously they didn't work very well. Very well. And by the time I slowed down, <laughs> by the time I, I was able to slow down off the highway, I got out and my tire was on fire. And all I had was a big chug from McDonald's that I had to pour on it. And thank God it put the fire out. But like, yeah. had I not had just a little bit of water or had I had a fire extinguisher, yeah. like, yeah. Anyways, I so. keep learning about this car that I've spent <laughs> a lot of time in. And it takes YouTube videos for me to learn about how dangerous that, that FJ is. But, but I'm such a good driver, it compensates for all of that. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> if I ever try and sell that thing, no one's gonna buy it after all these videos. <laughs> Anyways, let, let's continue on. What else you got back there? You got a, is that your pack? Oh, this is just a bag, uh, my fishing bag. So I've got a ton of different lures and baits and, you know, braided line and all that good stuff. That just kind of lives here. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it for like the back end of things. Um, nice. Well, I'm curious about your fridge. I want to see how big that thing actually is. Let's check it out. This fridge, there's a bunch of different companies out there. This is Iceco. Um, they're kind of newer to the market, but super efficient. And uh, yeah, there's plenty of room in there for cold drinks, steaks, meats, all that stuff. Can we get that bad boy out? Yeah. So this is probably one of the heavier items in the truck, but you know, worth it. Worth it. Yeah. You gotta push in. Push in, Thanks. pop up. Yeah. No problem. Oh, wow. Oh, you got a liquid death in here? Yeah, man. Speaking of which, if you're looking for things to drink, oh, I'm just kidding. Liquid death doesn't sponsor us, but it'd be awesome if they did. But does. they should. Cool. Yeah, they should. Nice. I've seen you with that thing filled before, so 
Yeah, like I know what it looks like. There's a ton of like like I said, you know, I could go for a couple weeks with this thing stocked. So if someone doesn't have a refrigerator in their car, you have done some backpacking in your day. What kind of foods would you tell someone to pack if they're getting in their Prius yeah. and they're driving for the weekend? In a situation, uh, freeze dried meals, you know, mountain house meals, all that stuff. Um, even like if you had a subscription to like My Patriot Supply, you know, you could just dip into that and grab what you needed to go, or even just like the whole five gallon bucket. Um, gotcha. And just and just go with that canned goods, you know, beans, rice. There's there's a lot you can take without needing, you know, power or cooler or whatever yeah. that will sustain you for long periods of time. Gotcha. So this is a luxury. Sure. It's basically all it is. But if you're on the road for six weeks, yeah. having a steak on hand or eggs or butter yeah. goes a long way. Yeah. For sure. Nice. So a lot of guys will run, you know, like a Yeti cooler, but then ice runs out. Mm -hmm. It gets water all over everything. Your meat is watered down. Like it's just not the best way of keeping food for a long period of time. And then how does that fit in there? Cause did you remove your <laughs> seats? Yes. So because it is just me and my future wife. I remove the back seats. Okay, well, that makes sense. I mean, if you're running with a crew and Rally Rats is out and about, you're not responsible for six or eight people. Right. It's like Kurt Russell and Death Trap. Just take out all the seats except for passenger, let it rip. Why is your passenger seat in a box? Well, this is a movie car. Okay. Yeah. And you know, when I eventually have kids, like I'll have to figure out a new vehicle and do a new build, which I'm excited about. But for now, this works for me. Big Sequoia or something. Yeah. And those seats, so talking about the back seats, those seats were 130 pounds. I weighed them when I took them out. So I saved that, which basically makes up for the tent. And um, yeah, it's all about weight, to be honest. You're running a Jackery. What's that? You're a Jackery. Yeah, so the Jackery kind of just lives there. Um, I can go back and forth between how I want to power the fridge, like I was talking about earlier. So this wire goes to the Jackery, to the fridge, and then I also have a secondary one from the fridge to the house battery. There's an outlet there for a 12 volt system. So I can just plug into that. And then I also have a charging cable that will, I just plug in right here and I get charged, it gets all charged up from the house battery, or yeah, from the alternator. Nice, nice. Got an extra, extra med bag up top too. Yeah, so this is my grab and go medical. This is just a basic trauma kit, you know, chest seal, combat cause, extra tourniquet. Um, really bad stuff, yeah. Yeah, your boo-boo kit can take a little while to get to, but the uh, emergency stuff you need yeah. fast. And then I'll typically have just like band-aids and stuff like in the glove box or whatever. Sure. So. Gotcha. Um, what do you got on the other side? Oh, oh, seeing as how this is a, basically a gun channel, right? Yeah. Somewhat? Important. Yeah. Yeah. So on the other side here, I have a uh, Vertex, um, what is it called? The Vertex. Uh, VTAC rifle bags, right? Yeah, it's the VTAC, VTAC scabbard. Scabbard, there it is. So VTAC uh, Vertex scabbard, super legit bag, just attaches to your seat here. And then I've got a 10-3 um, built out suppressed laser all that good stuff. And this essentially goes with me wherever I go. Gotcha. Nice. I love this bag because like you just saw how easy it was to access that rifle and I can get to it from my driver's seat. So I don't have to, you know, like reach, like I see a lot of guys putting this on the driver's seat, which in my mind, 
could be good for some things, but for me, I, I kind of want to access that firearm while I'm in the vehicle. I'm obviously situation dependent on what's going on, but um, just having that bag on the passenger seat, I can just reach over, unzip it, grab my rifle and bring it to me. It's putting a rifle in a bag and securing it in a vehicle in some way is such an overlooked thing. Yeah. Uh, so the likelihood of you getting into a wreck is so much higher than you getting into a gunfight. Right. And if you've ever been in a wreck with a rifle or a gun that's not secured, it becomes yeah. like a flying chunk of metal. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like I used to be, I, I was guilty of just riding with the rifle in the side of my seat all the time. It's like, mm -hmm. whenever I see people do that now, it's like, okay, you've never been in a wreck. Yeah. Because if you are, that's going to your face or onto a passenger, it's going anywhere. Yeah. And also just um, the concealability. Yeah. Too. Like, you know, if I'm in the city or whatever, I'm running errands, or, uh, you know, and somebody's looking in, they're not going to know, oh, there's a, you know, it doesn't look like a rifle, yeah. a rifle case. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, that kind of sums up the back seat. I mean, I've got, uh, you know, the solar uh, controller uh, unit right here. So this will, it's like a smart controller. So it'll take how much sun's coming in and basically trickle charge the battery or wherever I want to hook it up to. So. Um, that's another kind of big thing is like people will just, they'll be like, oh, I'm gonna get a solar panel and hook it up to my truck. And it's like, well, you, you gotta figure out like how that power is gonna get distributed, you know, for, for your batteries. So you can't just hook up a solar panel to like your battery, so. Dude. And then since we're here, what is this? Is this an awning? Yeah, so. I don't have this out obviously right now, but this is a 270 degree awning. So just unzips and then it folds all the way out and will end up, you know, over the hatch and ends like right about here. So on those rainy days or those hot sunny days, like we'll pop that and we'll have coverage, you know, so. A lot of coverage. A lot of coverage, just a little bit extra protection from the elements. Right. Which yeah. we might get here soon. Huh. This is true. Awesome. Well, yeah, and then up top on this side is like a privacy room or a shower room. So I can just pop that out and I've got a room where I can like take a shower. Nice. Yeah. But, you know, obviously if I'm in a bug out situation, that's like the least of my problems is taking a shower. Sure. sure. Eventually I, I would want to sanitize with some wipes or whatnot but you know yeah well who makes uh, who makes your tent so this is actually a prototype that i worked with the manufacturer with um way back in the day when i was like i'm gonna make rooftop tents and this is kind of a uh, the design was already out on the market but i kind of added some things here and there to make it in my mind better um, and it just, the manufacturing process was too long and it just, by the time I actually got the tent, like these models with like some of the extra features that I, I built into it, just kind of were already coming to market. And I was like, I'm not gonna be able to, to keep up with like how fast the market is moving with companies who have, you know, tons of revenue coming in and they can design this stuff and get it on a whim. So, um, yeah, and all that kind of happened like during the COVID era. So everything was, you know, twice as slow. So, gotcha. um, but yeah, I call it the rat's nest and it's something that I'm super stoked on. I honestly sleep better in this tent than I do at home. <laughs> it's cause it's flat. I'm telling you, stop sleeping in on mattresses. Well, you know, there's a, a three inch memory foam mattress up there. Oh, dude. That's good. That's and all you need. Yeah. It's, it's, it's perfect. And uh, yeah. So. Anything uh, in the front that's nifty or cool? or? Yeah, so the captain's seat is pretty important too. So we have comms and we have navigation. Um, navigation, obviously, when you're off grid super important we're running uh, a couple of different apps we're running 
uh, Gaia GPS and Onyx Off-Road. And these maps basically allow you to, when you're in service or have Wi-Fi, you can download the area that you're going to. And then when you get out of service, you can pull up every single little detail on that map still. So it allows you to just use offline maps. Gotcha. Um, so I typically run, I don't have my phone, but I'll run my phone here with uh, Onyx Off-Road. And then on my iPad, I run Gaia GPS. So I've got kind of a redundancy system um, off each other. So yeah, navigation, super important, because obviously you got to know where you're, where you're going and what kind of terrain you're getting into. And yeah, you can plot your routes and yeah. And, nice and what's your radio setup? So <clears throat> right now, just running GMRS, that's a Midland MXT 400, just a little GMRS in-car unit. Um, works great for communication on the trails. You know, obviously we don't have service everywhere we go and just being able to communicate from car to car, like as we're traveling as a convoy, uh, is just efficient. I mean, yeah, yeah. there's no other, <sighs> yeah. Nice. I'm not calling each other all the time. And then I, I also have a couple of handhelds. So you always want to keep like an in-car unit and a handheld unit that you can easily just hand off to someone else. Hand off, you know, you're on the go, you just grab it and go. Um, yeah, and then these, you know, these have ham capabilities. Um, so I'm not just tied to GMRS, like if somebody else is on like a ham frequency or whatever, I just plug that in and you're good to go. And then I also, I also keep a Beofang because a Beofang is just a good like throwaway radio sure. if you need to. Yeah. Cheap and does the job, works really well and yeah, so. Awesome. Well, uh, yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, what about passenger side? Not really much going on passenger side. Uh, there's like another Molly panel on the center console with like multi-tool flashlight, just easy access to grab, you know, a light if I need to, if I don't have my handheld light on me, which I typically do at all times. But um, yeah, and then, so winch controller super jank but just like a three position switch that i had to f fix on the trail because that wireless system went down and gotta have a winch and so rig that up and that's actually worked really well uh it's a little difficult to get used to at first because you're like you're driving and you're you're like winching at the same time right so mm -hmm. this that whole like motion is just difficult. Whereas if you had a remote in your hand and wireless, like you can just, you know, kind of be at ease, like winching yourself up an obstacle or whatever. Gotcha. Okay, so after walking through a lot of your car, if someone like me is probably not gonna be installing a snorkel and I like the idea of a rooftop tent, but I probably could, you know, pull a tent out or sleep in my car with a good sleeping bag. What are some things that you would say are a must? Uh, food and water, yeah. for sure. And, uh, you know, self-protection, so firearm of some sorts, whether it's a rifle or pistol, and, and medical. I mean, you know, if I didn't have this vehicle and I had a Prius, I would have a, a bug out bag, which houses my sleep system and you know, clothes and all that good stuff. And then, uh, you know, medical. And then I'd have a separate box for like food and then carry some extra water on hand. Yeah. And yeah. that that would give you the ability to just. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. As cringe as, as the bug out term has become, at the end of the day, like a bug out bag is basically just like, it's just a small sustainment kit. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, paper maps. Yep. Like I've got, I have a paper map floating around in there somewhere of just like my local area. So um, even if like, 
I'm not in service, my offline maps are not working or whatever, like I can just fall back to that paper map, yeah. which is kind of a forgotten art, but. Yeah, you know. well, most people don't even know that you can get a paper map of every single state in the entire United States for free. You yeah. just go to the, the, like the visitors part of a state's website and they will send you copies for free. You have to wait like a couple weeks, but I know we were doing that back in the day. We got uh, maps of every single state United States and then like 20 copies of the ones in Tennessee to hand out to buddies. Yeah. So yeah, you should hit that up if you haven't already. Any state that you live in or that surrounds you or states uh, where your loved ones live and every state in between, get free maps. You might as well have them. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, and then I've, so I have an air compressor under the hood that I control with this switch right here. And that basically just allows, like when you're off-road, you air down your tires uh, for better traction and comfortability and all that good stuff. So you gotta air back up somehow, right? So typically everyone either has an air compressor like somewhere in their trunk or it's just more efficient to keep it under the hood and we can air up our tires when we get off a trail and hit the highway. Nice. So. Looks like you got some max tracks down here too. Yeah, traction, that's another thing uh, we didn't really cover is recovery. Like, say you're stuck, how do you get out? Well, there's a lot of different tools that you should carry on hand to be able to get your vehicle out of a sticky situation. Uh, I've used these a ton, these are max tracks and typically keep two pairs on hand so you get four. Uh, the other two are on the other side. And these are also great for if you have a rooftop tent, you can level your vehicle on uneven terrain and level out your tent so you can have a better night's sleep. Nice. And yeah. we do use these to recover vehicles when we're stuck, but it's also, <laughs> like I use mine more for just like leveling out the vehicle, which sure. sounds stupid, but. Well, if you're living out comforts. of it for weeks at a time, yeah. makes a big difference, I would assume. Yeah. And the, uh, the other stuff that you should have in your recovery kit, it's super important to keep this stuff on hand as well. And this is basically a bag full of reco recovery items. So a lot of people will keep their recovery stuff like in a Pelican, on top of your roof rack or your tent or whatever, or in the cab, but this stuff gets muddy and dirty real quick and I don't want that in my cab, so I keep it in this waterproof bag that attaches to my spare tire. So essentially we have a tree saver, a kinetic rope, a uh, few soft shackles. Oh, let me see that one with the ball on it. This one? Oh, this has some serious Casino Royale chair, vi chair torture <laughs> scene vibes. <laughs> um, and then just like a, a toe strap in a snatch block. So, I mean, this is a whole, you know, topic we can get in the weeds it, in, but, um, Are you guys just like, what am I looking at? No, no. I think it's okay. a general idea. Yeah. yeah, so. I mean, I've been out with you when we've used these. Yeah. To pull watched, Charles out of the jam. Watch your YouTube videos. So. Oh, hey, thanks, man. Yeah. 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 But yeah, so this stuff, I mean, you, you basically use with your winch, so like a tree strap and soft shackles, you connect to like your winch line. And then the other, at the other end, what you're pulling off of, um, you connect another soft shackle to the tree strap and then you use your winch and you go to town. And then if you need to change angles, um, like say there's only like a tree over here, but your vehicle's like here, well, you don't want to tow that direction, right? Like you don't want to pull that direction. You need to go this way. So you can just put a snatch block where you need to and that basically changes the angle of the, the pull. Yeah, so this kit uh, will get me out of pretty much anything. And it's fairly compact. 
It's not yeah, uh, fairly compact. It's not like you need to go um, buy a massive pelican full of stuff. Nah. But these are these are essential to recovering your vehicle. And not only just recovering it, but doing it safely. Because that's uh, another very important thing is, is safety when you're doing all this stuff. There's been a ton of accidents because people are not safe and people have actually been killed because of it, so. Create too much tension on a vehicle and something gives. Yeah, using a steel line um, is not the safest, so we opt for like a synthetic line. Um, things snapping because of the tension and like like people like if you're if you're recovering a, a vehicle and pulling your your stuck vehicle back some people will just hook up like a chain to like a tow hitch or something like a, a ball you know and they'll get you know they'll yank it back and that ball actually ends up breaking and gets flung and there's been multiple cases of you know, that that ball going through like the window and hitting somebody in the face and they're just, they're gone. So safety when you're recovering, you know, 7,000 pound vehicle is, is extremely important. Um, so yeah, this is the winch and synthetic line on there with an end link. Um, this is a 10,000 pound winch, which is like the perfect size for this vehicle. Uh, there's multiple ratings on winches. So, you know, if I had like a full size Tundra or something like that, like I would opt for like a 12,000 pound winch. Um, but yeah, so that's super important to have because I honestly use this a ton. Uh, we get stuck a lot and the safest way to get out of stuck situations depending on the actual situation is uh, not like hammering the throttle and like trying to get through it like you're risking breaking something so just a nice easy like winch pull out of your situation is a lot safer safer and you know your your chances of breaking something are less and less and less yeah gotcha so and uh tell me about your antenna setup because i see two aftermarket antennas on this rig. Yeah, so this bad boy right here, <laughs> uh, so people make fun of me all the time, but this is like the Australian look. They always have their antennas up in the front. Um, this is just a big giant, like plus six dB antenna for the in-car unit. Um, the, the range on this thing actually works uh, really well, especially like when we were out west and it was just open and there wasn't any tree coverage, like this reaching, you know, like some of the other vehicles in town was, uh, it was definitely a good thing to have. Um, and then the, that other antenna that you see on the side hanging off, this is a cell phone booster. So when you turn it on, it'll boost the signal of your cell service and you can send out text messages and phone calls and all that good stuff. Would I recommend this? No, I wouldn't. It's very spotty. It doesn't work if you don't have signal. So um, it only amplifies, you know, the little signal that you do have. And honestly, it hasn't impressed me a whole lot. So it's right now, it's just kind of on there. Um, I don't really use it that much, but. Gotcha. Um, it's also an older model for this company. So I'm sure like with the, t like I bought this, I don't know, three years ago or whatever. So I'm sure they've done like a lot more R and D to produce a better product that is actually functionable. Gotcha. So, yeah. so it looks like you have a, uh, you have a new rack as well as an ax and yeah, so this rack is by a company called Sherpa Equipment Company. Um, it's, in my opinion, one of the best stealth style racks on the market right now because of its, its strength and a lot of little quirks here and there that just make it better than some of the other companies out there. Um, when you're putting, when you're loading down your roof, 
you want to make sure and have a s extremely solid foundation to attach that stuff to. Um, I've seen some other brands uh, break like extrusions on the side, just like crack because of the weight and stuff. And um, the Sherpa rack is very durable. Um, the company is an amazing company. The guys who own the company are amazing people. They're like-minded like we are and one of the best racks out there. Um, yeah. Nice axe and, and uh, e-tool back there. Yeah, axe for, you know, chopping firewood because got to have fire. And then just a shovel for... Gotcha. You could dig out a tire. I mostly just use it for the shitter. You know, go dig a latrine and yep. take a dump in the woods. <laughs> so, but yeah, man, it's... Uh, there's still some things I want to do to this to make it that much more capable. Um, but I'm happy where it's at. It's taken, you know, two, almost three years to get it exactly kind of where I want it. Um, I've gone through different variations of different components here and there. And uh, did you state how many miles you have on this thing yet? So this has over 300,000 miles. And yes, things have broken here and there, but I've replaced them and you just keep trucking. As far as the actual mileage on the truck, like I haven't had any really serious engine damage. So you just keep your, you know, 5,000 mile oil change, keep fluids topped off, like everything maintained and it just it keeps going. And as a byproduct of your passion and pursuit of this stuff, you've basically become a mechanic. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'm a big DIYer, so pretty much everything on this truck that you've seen, I have installed myself or, you know, built myself like this rear bumper was a weld together kit and I learned how to weld so I could weld this bumper. Um, the reason for that was it was a lot cheaper. I probably saved $2,500 just buying a kit and doing it myself as opposed to spending you know four grand on a rear bumper setup so and now you have another skill yeah and now with I, some experience now i have another skill um but yeah pretty much everything mechanically i've done myself with the help of some of my teammates and fortunate enough to have one of my really good buddies own mill creek overland uh, which is a shop here in nashville and they specialize in off-road builds and they do other various mechanical things for regular typical cars um, but been very blessed to be able to use his shop and lift to be able to diy a lot of this stuff so um it's all about connections yeah okay so that takes care of everything above board what's going on underneath for those that are like you know the nerds that are super interested yeah so you know, the bottom half of the truck, obviously I have aftermarket wheels and tires, uh, suspension system, skid plates, armor, all that good stuff. Um, these are like a 34 inch tire, which is obviously a lot bigger than, you know, what comes stock. Uh, and then the wheels are also aftermarket wheels. Uh, these have like a beadlock technology. So, you know, when you're aired down to like 10 PSI going over obstacles and stuff, you don't like pop a bead off the wheel and then have to deal with that whole mess. So um, these are Method 701 wheels and honestly they've been great. Like I, like I said, I've aired down to like 7 PSI and I haven't popped a bead. Um, the suspension is a Dobinson's IMS suspension. It's basically gives the vehicle a, a two and a half inch two to two and a half inch lift and um, you know when you're when you're building out a vehicle suspension is super important not only for the ride quality but also to be able to handle like all this weight and stuff so um, you know on different obstacles your vehicle's flexing and you want to get that flex out of your vehicle so just aftermarket suspension is is definitely the way to go when you're uh, building out something like this uh, you know, along with the shocks, you, you have uh, 
different springs or coils that are rated for certain weights to actually house like all the weight that you add to a vehicle. So, you know, that's all kind of optional. Like you can pick and choose, like, do I want like a 700 pound, uh, you know, load or, or 600? It's all gonna be dependent on like what you're building your vehicle out for. Um, and then, you know, for armor, we've got <clears throat> front and rear bumper. Uh, basically the front bumper uh, with something like this will give you capabilities of like putting a winch on and also clearance over obstacles because you know factory bumper is going to hang down lower so when you're when you're doing that approach angle you know you have potential of ripping off your front bumper um, going over stuff so this just it just gives you really solid protection and then moving under we have uh, some aluminum skid plates. So the factory skid plates are not the greatest. So, uh, you know, updating those and getting beefier skid plates allows you to go over boulders with, you know, a lot more protection and gives you peace of mind that you're not gonna tear up, you know, your undercarriage and crucial components like transfer case and all that stuff, so. Gotcha. Um, and then rock sliders along the sides of the vehicle. Uh, these are just basically another add-on to your armor package. Like these are super important. Uh, you know, going over boulders and stuff, you're not dinging up your, your side panels. And you can actually utilize these to like, you know, if you are, <laughs> If you have experience, you're a good driver, you can, you know, pick out your line on the trail and actually be able to put your slider on something to pivot you around, you know, different obstacles and whatnot. So it's, uh, you know, it's good to have these. Yeah. And mine rusted off my FJ, by the way. So much use? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. And I'll add, like, you know, you'll see, like, trucks around town with, like, somewhat of a slider, but then they have the step down. And uh, you can tell those guys, they don't really go off road a whole lot because multiple, multiple times I've seen those sliders get caught or those, those step downs get caught on obstacles and it just, uh, it's a hassle to deal with. I've seen them, you know, com completely rip off at times. And so I just recommend like a nice straight slider to, protect your side panels. So so what you're saying is if someone's out there and they're trying to pose and they have one of those step downs, take it off, put this on, and then uh, what's it called? Battle wear, the the paint job. Yeah, yeah that's that's what you do. Scuff it up at the yeah, so <laughs> which is I'm sure what you've done, right? You didn't actually use this, you just scuffed it up. Oh yeah, the, the whole vehicle, I mean, like I added this with my key, you know, to make it cool, like all these pinstripes. Like I, I don't go through trails or anything. I just kind of take my key every once in a while and just kind of like, to it. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. had someone run into you. And this dent right here, I was just like, oh, I think I need a dent there to make it aesthetically better. So I just kind of gave it the old swag. Yeah. So you also have a lot of lighting on this thing. Yes. Do you, well, why? Why did you add the lights where you did? and uh, what brands are you using? <laughs> so I've got a mixture of a few different brands just because I wanted to test out different various brands. Um, but lighting is, <sighs> it's important because if you do a lot of stuff at night, you need to see what you're doing. And especially if you're like on a trail, you need to see, you know, further out and you also need to see the sides of the trail and you also need to see like somewhat under your vehicle like like tire placement like I'll start there for example I've got rock lights here and all throughout the undercarriage of the vehicle so it just cranks light and pumps it down in front of the tire so if I'm on a trail at night and I'm going over stuff I can just you know, flip that switch on and like stick my head out the window and it, everything's illuminated. So I, I can see like different kinds of obstacles, whatever, whatever the case might be. Um, and then, you know, same thing for 
back of the truck, like I can see what's happening in the rear. And then you've got these ditch lights, which are by rigid. And these kind of have an angle outboard so I can illuminate you know, not just straight in front of me, but I can see out the sides and, and look and just like, I have that visibility of everything around me. Mm. Um, and then I, you know, obviously I'm punching light up here and the light bar. And the light bar just gives me distance, right? So a lot of guys will set up their lights different and it's all kind of user preference, but there is kind of a guide to the lighting process. So, you know, you want your distance and you want, uh, like if I'm driving, you want to see your distance and you also kind of want to see in front of you. So, you know, a light bar can cover that distance and then, you know, some fog lights up front can cover like, you know, a little bit closer and then your side lights pointed outboard. So you got that visibility and then also your undercarriage so you can see, you know, the ground. Yeah. You can't outrun your headlights if your headlights are the sun. <laughs> um, and then, you know, there's uh, chase lights and backup lights on the rear end too that are made by Baja and so I can see what's behind me. Nice. So. And so the person behind you can see you. Yes, which is important. So uh, a chase light, uh, we've been in tons of situations where the trail is very dusty. You, even though you're following close behind, you know, the person in front of you, you can't even see them. Like they're just completely dusted out. So flip on the chase light, that way you know uh, what the vehicle in front of you is doing and, you know, you can stop or prevent an accident or see where they are or whatever, you know, so. Awesome. Well, but, do you have anything under the hood worth talking about? Not, I mean, I mean, yeah. A little bit of a mess right now, but mostly all factory. I mean, you've got the 2UZFE, the air compressor sits over there in that corner. Um, when I end up putting a dual battery in, I'll probably move some stuff around and put it in this area. And then all of the electrical, and this is where, you know, fires have potential to start because there's so much electrical happening right there. Um, and this is, it's not a complete rat's nest. I've seen a lot worse, but it's also not perfect. Um, it's something I've been wanting to go back and kind of touch up and redo is just kind of clean that up, make it look a little bit more presentable, but, uh, it gets the job done. And honestly with this, like, I'm not, not worried about electrical fires. I mean, there's always a potential for it to happen, but, um, since I've wired and soldered everything correctly, you know, that the chances of a fire is, uh, you know, less likely. And so, there's another skill set. Yeah. Yeah. Wiring, yeah, electrical, all that stuff. Yep. So not a crazy whole lot going on under the hood, but. Well, if a stock Toyota is getting you over 300,000 miles, don't fix something that's not broke. Right. Yep. Well, uh, to kind of wrap this up, if um, someone is looking to, two things. If someone's looking to be able to expand their capability and perhaps sustain themselves on the road for several days or a week at a time, what are the absolute bare, bare essentials that they should carry with them? Uh, I'll harp on this all day long, but food and water. Of course. Some sort of shelter, so sleep system. Um, personal protection, so again, rifle or pistol, and medical. Cool. And it doesn't have to be fancy. It, it really doesn't. Uh, a lot of people will see all this fancy stuff and be like, oh, I need that, I need this, and yada, yada. And it's like, honestly, dude, you don't need all of this. You can, uh, you know, not that there's a situation, but if, if you're just like want to get into off-roading or overlanding, like you can just, just pack up, you know, the essentials and just go. Gotcha. Just get out there. 
what like, um someone who's actually interested in the, you know kitting out their truck fully um what what advice would you have for them if they're just starting because this looks like a very expensive experiment right yeah it's kind of <laughs> turned into that i didn't think it was going to go as far as it has but uh here we are so but i would say um you know start with your vehicle make sure that it's reliable and that everything's maintained um because that's gonna keep you going in the in the long run for the distance and um don't start with all of these accessories because honestly you don't you don't need them like i was saying you just need the essentials uh, but if you are going this route of like, you know, you want to build your vehicle, start from the ground up. So, you know, suspension, wheels, tires, armor to protect your vehicle, and then just start building from the ground up. So, yeah, um, that's probably the best advice I could give, but definitely, you, yeah. You know, when, when we think about first time AR buyers, the first thing they want to do is they want to go out and just buy the cheapest optic they can get. They want to put a light on it or they want to put a laser on it. They want to put a cool like foregrip that pops down to a bipod and they end up wasting all this money, which we just talked about in a recent video. Yeah. They want to waste all this money on things that make their gun look cool, mm -hmm. but not actually functional. Yeah. And I've seen, though I'm not as like deep into the overlanding world as you are, I've noticed that pull, even with my FJ, like, oh, I want to put this thing on it and this thing on it because it looks cool. And it's like, whoa, 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 hold up, dude. Do you even have a way to store water in there? Yeah. Do you even have a way to, right. you know, do you have a box that you can store food in? Mm -hmm. Have you thought about all this stuff? It's like, there's always this pull to do and to purchase things that make something look cool. And everyone forgets about Function. the important stuff. Yeah, right. And then, you know, also... It's the same thing in the off-road and overland industry. Like, you know, I there's like your sight mark options, and then there's your Aimpoint T2 options, right? Yeah. And it's like, and then there's like kind of an in-between. So, you know, doing, and I've done a ton of research on like a lot of different brands and various products and whatnot, and um, have chosen to, to kind of just get like, the Aimpoint or EOTech equivalent of some of this off-road stuff. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. So, well, but, uh, yeah. I think you've got everything that you need to uh, make your way up to New York and uh, propose. Yeah. I mean, uh, pick up your your girlfriend. Yeah. Uh, uh, and get her know, out of get her out of go. town. That New York's a real tricky one because, you know, if, if the city did get shut down, like you're basically boxed in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, 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 if someone lives in a major, major metropolitan area, the thing that they should have on their radar is when things start to look bad, not after they've gotten bad, because after yes. they've gotten bad, there's no getting yeah. in or out. Yep, and that's that just goes down to preparedness, man. It's a mindset, and even though we use, you know, these vehicles for fun and as a tool to to get us from point A to point B, and have create those memories and have those experiences. Uh, when I first started building on this, it was more of like that preparedness mindset as well. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just like, oh, I'm gonna go, you know, spend $20,000 and just like build this thing out just to have fun. No, it serves a purpose and I've built it to serve that purpose. And a lot of it is that preparedness mindset, so. Makes sense, dude. Awesome, well. Thank you for uh, the overview, man. Yeah. I, uh, I now know I do not want to get into this, <laughs> <laughs> but it's a great reminder to keep the stuff that I need stocked. Yes. So yeah, and absolutely. And, and vehicle maintenance. Yeah. yeah. And you, my FJ totally doesn't need it all. You whatsoever. guys are doing a great job with the channel and, and, you know, making sure you're harping on those topics of the essentials to be prepared and not like going overboard full bore like prepper status yeah thanks man yeah, yeah. thank so. you well lastly where can people find you i know you make a lot of content yes if people are looking for some yeah. of these topics or so, uh you can find me on instagram nm underscore desert underscore rats uh that's my main account and then also 
uh, Rally Rats, Rally underscore Rats. And then our YouTube channel is just Rally Rats. Gotcha. Yeah, and that's cool. a ton of Overland content and uh, some firearm content coming out on that page too, so. Yeah. yeah. And for those of you who don't know, Chad is also a professional videographer slash DP slash everything you can think of. And he's filmed a lot of our videos for us. You just didn't know it was him behind the camera, so. It's mostly been Nick. Yeah, mostly but Nick. Yeah. 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 But I learned everything from you, Chad. Oh man, thank you. Thank you. Well guys, this wraps it up. If you guys are looking for ways to support us, you can hit up our Patreon. Those guys get a lot of information as far as when things like merchandise or other goodies that we have for sale that we're working on will be coming out. You can also go to our website and find our email link. And we don't often send out emails. In fact, I'd say that we, we really don't send out emails, but if there are good notifications on things that you guys need to know, we do that before we hit up Instagram or YouTube. And then of course, hit subscribe follow and share with some of the, the other people in your life that you think might enjoy or need some of this content. Chad, thank you again. Nick, thanks for holding camera. And uh, we gotta go get some food. Yes. Yeah, I'm starving. Let's do it. Cool truck. <laughs>